What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Invest 92L continuing to quickly organize and potentially develop in the next day or so. And now we have a new area of interest as currently in the southern Gulf of Mexico as of right now, just as we were anticipating that to happen. We're paying attention to all this as well as some pot a potential threat in the Caribbean. We are seeing increased thunderstorm activity over there, so we'll also have to pay attention to that to see what's going on in the next few, a few days or so. But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and show you what we have pulled up. This is Invest 92L right here in the eastern Atlantic Ocean right now. Here's the synopsis right now. A low-latitude tropical wave is located several hundred miles south-southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, continues to produce a large area of showers and thunderstorms. This activity has become a bit more concentrated this afternoon and environmental conditions are more appear conducive for additional development of the system during the next several days. A tropical depression is likely to form in the next couple of days while it moves west-northwestward or northwestward across the eastern tropical Atlantic. 70% chance of formation in the next 48 hours. It was at 40% 24 hours ago, and an 80% chance of formation in the next seven days. No change on that front. So odds are this thing is likely going to organize and develop and strengthen in the next, I'd say, 24 to 48 hours or so, depending on how this all plays out. But that's Invest 92L out here in the eastern tropical Atlantic, very low in the in the main development region right here. It's about it's about I'd say like seven or eight degrees north, which that is very abnormal for a tropical wave. I must comment on that. Meanwhile, this is a bigger threat right here, at least to land at this point. Here's the situation: we have a shower and thunderstorm activity has changed little in organization in association with a small area of low pressure over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Environmental conditions appear only marginally marginal marginally favorable for some additional development while the system moves slowly northward before the low merges with a frontal system over the western Gulf of Mexico by midweek. We have a 20% chance of formation in the next 48 hours and a 20% chance of formation in the next seven days. Right now, this is off the coast of Mexico at this cur uh, current point, so we'll have to continue to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. We have a lot of serious situations that could, uh, that could potentially pop up, so as we continue to get into this active weather period, be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting. They do individual one-on-one -on -one weather consulting cater to your local area for more information on them be sure to check out their link in the description down below and be sure to use the code predictor for 50 percent off your first month but with that being said ladies and gentlemen let's go ahead and get on to the operational models at this point Here's what we have starting with the European, then we'll go ahead and do the GFS, the CMC, the NavGem, Icon, all of the above, so that way we give you a full understanding of what is going on. So here's the European model at this current point. We're going to focus first on Invest 92L, and then we'll focus on this whole uh, Gulf of Mexico business over here, since Invest 92L is going to be qu uh, quicker to develop. So here's the situation. 92L starts to organize and develops, potentially strengthens into a tropical storm in the next little while. However, the European model has been pretty interesting. It has it pushing a little bit further to the west before starting to make that turn to the northwest at that point. And things start to gradually organize. It doesn't exactly strengthen that much out here in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. Primarily due to the conditions as well as it having a hard time organizing at that point. In the, and eventually it's going to be merging with this trough right here. And that's pretty much the last we're going to hear from 92L according to what the Europeans saying. Other models say completely different things, so keep that in mind. Meanwhile, as we're taking a look at the Western Gulf uh, st situation we have right here, we're starting to see maybe a little bit of organization and development at this current point. We're starting to see a potential low pressure system start to develop. You start to see that potentially in the uh, in the West Central Gulf, of Mexico, off the coast of Texas, before starting to move east towards Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, into the Florida Panhandle and Georgia, potentially bringing some flooding and maybe a little bit of winds if this thing does end up organizing and developing at this current point. And then as time continues to go on, it moves off the coast right here, and then it becomes a tr subtropical system, at least from what I am seeing. And then potentially from there, we, uh, we see at least maybe so uh, something happening. We'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on with that run right there. So that's the European model that we just showed you. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the GFS model. GFS has been very interesting all this time, to say at the very least. 
Starting with 92L, the GFS is starting to show a quick organization and development, potentially strengthening into a hurricane as time continues to go on. However, it's mainly expected to stay in the eastern Atlantic Ocean, similar to what Lorenzo did back in 2019. Interestingly enough, I must comment on that, staying just west of the Cabo Verde Islands. But at the same time, it's still in the eastern Atlantic, at least pushing potentially to, uh, pot pushing that, that that direction at that point before merging with a trough, at least in the eastern Atlantic, maybe undergoing a little bit of a Fujiwara before both of them start to dissipate and then merge with this new frontal system that is expected to impact the United Kingdom in the next 10 days or so. So we'll have to see how this whole thing plays out because that... Because that whole thing actually emerges off of a mid-latitude cyclone that comes uh, that comes through the Midwest and into the Mid-Atlantic, and then starts to bring some potential impacts towards the UK down the road. So we'll have to pay attention to that. The other thing I'm looking at as well is that, of course, that Gulf development that we are seeing at this current point. We see uh, we see uh, also something else interesting happening in the Eastern Atlantic. We have Ly Lydia expected to make landfall as a hurricane in Western Mexico. However, uh, based on, and based off what I'm seeing, the Remnants of Lydia are expected to move through the uh, Gulf of Mexico and potentially merge with that low pressure system that's in the southern Gul uh, Gulf at this current point. So definitely something to monitor for sure. And then either way, it's still going to be bringing potentially some gusty winds, a lot of rainfall across Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, into Georgia and the Florida Panhandle before becoming either subtropical or a mid-latitude cyclone out here in the Atlantic Ocean. So that's what we have going on with what we have with the Gulf system right there, a potential merger with a Hurricane Lydia as it uh, starts to approach the Gulf of Mexico. It's not a hurricane yet. It's a tropical, uh, a tropical storm, but it's nearing hurricane strength at this current point so either way there's still going to be a lot of rainfall and a lot of potential flood uh, flooding to happen so that's what we have going on with the whole situation with uh, the gfs next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the cmc model cmc has been very interesting to say at the very least cmc has also been pretty consistent so we'll have to keep an eye on it as time continues to progress and as we continue to look through this, it's showing a, trop a tropical storm development starting to organize and develop potentially strength into a Category 1 hurricane as this th as 92L uh, continues through the eastern Atlantic before starting to weaken and then eventually merge with a frontal system as time continues to go on. But in the meantime, I'm also paying attention to the Caribbean Sea and uh, the Gulf of Mexico because the CMC has been calling for several potential areas of development, at least over the next few days or so. So here's what we have. We have this ex uh, this extreme uh, southwestern uh, Gulf of Mexico system in the Bay of Campeche at this current point off the coast of Mexico. It's going to start to gradually organize and potentially develop. It merges with the remnants of Lydia from the eastern uh, Pacific at this current point, and then it starts to merge into Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Louisiana. starts bringing potential flooding to a lot of Georgia, Florida, maybe even to the Carolinas if it gets uh, to that far to the north. And then this thing merges off the Carolina coast, and then things really start to get interesting. We start to see a potential either subtropical or mid-latitude cyclone out here in the Atlantic. So definitely something to pay attention to over the next little while so that's something to keep an eye on i'm also they're also registering a few areas of potential low pressure going on at least in the uh, in the caribbean sea maybe another gyre starts to develop over there we're not 100 percent sure the uh, the so the climate weather, the climate prediction center actually is calling for something potentially to happen around either the extreme eastern Atlantic, uh, not Atlantic Pacific Ocean, or the extreme Western Caribbean Sea to start developing in the next couple of weeks or so. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it. Hurricane season is still not over as of right now. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and show you the NavGem model. NavGem has been pretty interesting to say at the very least. NavGem is having Invest 92L start to organize develop strengthened into a tropical storm at the very least before starting to show some signs of stagnation and then gradually gradual weakening as it starts to merge with another low pressure system another trough over there while it's completely surrounded by high pressure so definitely something to monitor as time continues to go on that weak high pressure is what's going to end up blocking this from getting to the lesser Antilles so for those of you who are watching the leeward islands you're gonna, it's not going to be like Philippe 
where it was just continued to move to the West despite everything that was going on. So that's not going to be happening, and that's good news. In the meantime, if we go ahead and show you the, what's going on in the, in the Bay of Campeche out here in the Gulf of Mexico, if we take a look at this right now, the Bay of Campeche, we're starting to see signs of organization. And then after the remnants of Lydia come ashore through Mexico, we start to see increasing signs of at least some potential mo a moisture, in, uh, a huge moisture increase, maybe some signs of development if the shear does weaken in a little bit. We'll have to pay attention to that. Meanwhile, it brings lots of rain to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, the Carolinas, and especially in Florida, especially in the Florida panhandle. That's the area I'm paying attention to the most at this current point. However, we're going to have to keep an eye on the wind shear. If we go ahead and show you the wind shear right now, we're looking at 90 plus knots of wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico. So depending on what happens over the next few days, it's gonna. It's either going to stay there and just absolutely destroy the tropical characteristics of this, or it's gonna weaken maybe a, a good twenty to thirty knots. It's still gonna be a hard time. The shear could potentially tear that apart, but we'll have to see how this whole thing plays out in the in the long term. So that's what we have going on with the Navgem model. Last model we're showing you is the Icon model. The Icon has been very interesting all hurricane season, and it continues to be very interesting today. Starting with 92L, is starting to show signs of organization, development, and strengthening out here in the uh, in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. And then we get down to 1,006 millibars at this current point, then to 1,005, 1,003. At, uh, so basically a tropical storm at this point if you take it by pressure alone. And it kind of just stays there. It kind of is similar to that of the nav gem. It kind of just stagnates there before starting to uh, weaken and merge with another low pressure system down the road right here. So that's the situation in the eastern Atlantic. As for the Gulf of Mexico, the icon has been very interesting how this plays out because they are showing some potential signs of organization and development even before the remnants of Lydia move through Mexico and bring a huge moisture infusion into the, uh, into the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see from the icon, there's a low pressure uh, system that's kind of tagged by the icon model about 60 hours out. So depending on how this whole thing plays out will depend on what the development will be. Either way, plenty of rainfall, potential of uh, potential flood threat for a lot of these areas out here, especially in the, the deep south, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida, especially there before it starts merging with another mid-latitude cyclone, and then and then the remnants exit as another subtropical system of that at that current point. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to, uh, that has been really going on, and it continues to go on. Hurricane season definitely is not over yet. It's not over officially until November 30th. So this has been an interesting situation pretty much all season long. We've had record warm waters. We have had record ocean heat content. And despite it being an El Nino year, the wind shear has not been weakening, especially to in the Caribbean Sea, not, not been strengthening it rather, especially in the Caribbean Sea, especially in the main development region. This is going to be a long road left to go. So we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel as more information continues to come in. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal with this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Be sure to check out my friends over at Prestige Weather Consulting for 50% off your first month using the code PREDICTOR. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.